Hello, everyone, and welcome to Grip Lock Foundation Disc Golf Weekly Podcast. I'm Hunter, joined as always by Trevor and, and I'm Connor. What up? Uh, quite the show today. A lot of stuff went down at Waco. It was wacko, as it always seems to be. We'll have a Patreon question of the week, a little manufacturer <laughs> cup update, and then Trevor's <laughs> trivia, all the typical stuff. But before we get into all of that, quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video. Top of the morning to you. This episode is brought to you by the St. Paddy's Day Shamrock Shavers Manscaped. Let your confidence shine bright this That's year me. with Manscaped's Lawnmower 5.0 and embrace the luck of the Irish by joining the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped. Head over to manscaped.com and use code GRIPLOCK for 20% off and free shipping. Ever since I've used Manscaped, I can proudly say I found my pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You can meet your new lucky charm for St. Paddy's Day, the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It comes with two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, one for a classic trim, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. Complete your look with Manscaped's signature beard hedger pro kit and handyman electric face shaver whether you're sculpting your beard or cleaning up your neckline these things always are the right tool for the job don't forget you can get 20 percent off and free shipping with code grip locked over at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with code one word grip locked at manscaped.com i really should learn the asl to the manscaped reads i think it would be fun it could be something and that would be fun uh yeah because because our yep Patreon question of the week. Uh, I was trying to think. Good of, stop. I was, thinking of, <laughs> I was thinking of something with audio listeners. I was like, that has nothing to do. It's purely visual. And so yep. I just ignored it. Good and kept stop. Going. Uh, Patreon question of the week. If you don't know where this comes from, it comes from uh, patreon.com slash foundation disc golf. Guys, did we, talk about, did we talk about Katrina Allen having a baby at any point in this podcast? Uh, no. no. I'm blocked. I couldn't see it. Okay. She's having a baby? Yeah, I, I have didn't my know accounts. that. I have my accounts. Yeah, yeah. Her and Austin Hannum. She's having a kid. She's wow. in, July. in July. Yeah, mid season. <laughs> wow. Mid season. When in July? I don't know. Don't know. The same day as your baby. <laughs> no due. way. Yeah. yeah. You. Would, when is when is you Yuli's baby Jr. due? June. Or maybe it's either like a month before or after you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Not quite. I know the trifecta, like three incredible disc golfers <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I, you made me chuck, You made me full on chuckle on that one, Trey. <laughs> I think you're better than Cat right now. <laughs> Thanks, nah, man. That's one of the Waco storylines. I'm not story sure about that. Actually, probably not a Waco storyline. I think that she'd be able to conquest one of the courses that we try to conquest. <laughs> we did have so course conquest. If you haven't seen it, Connor and I went out and we got. Who's ready for next month? <laughs> this month. This month. This, you Nobody is. Nobody's happy. <laughs> we about had it. someone came in the store. I today. read the comments. They're rough. <laughs> someone came in the store on like Friday, and they had driven from Michigan just to play our courses. And one of them, they were like, "I have to go see his heritage." <laughs> and he showed up. He showed up. He's talking to Connor and I, who just played alt shot and shot ten over through nine holes out there. <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, yeah, I went went even par. It was not as hard as I expected it to be." No, like, it's no. not. I was like, "No, yeah, we we try to make that clear that we get, thing is, we get we get mad cow disease every time we." show up <laughs> if you just if you hit a tree off your drive you make you just, bogey you suck yeah it's yeah. just it's so hard yeah but if you if you pure the drive you're gonna be just fine yeah like par is <laughs> yeah, not that that's what, like whenever it. you throw a decent tee shot it looks like wow this is easy like par but is hard. not yeah. hard all all but like one hole par is not hard on mm -hmm. i disagree with that statement maybe two holes I, that par three that drops off the face of the earth that's a tough par and the last hole is a very tough par uh, the the two I had in my head were the last hole and uh, the first hole for us. <laughs> the first but, hole is kind of a tough bar. Yeah, what are you talking about? We bar. did great on the first. We hole. did. Connor and I <laughs> <laughs> annihilated. That it. was the best part of the video. <laughs> but the rest of them, I mean, the rest of them, like you put a drive in the fairway. I think we need to like maybe we just had to put it on the line. And be like, if we don't get it this month, we just cancel the series. We I think I think we, we might have put the pressure on. Put the pressure. I on mean, this is our fifth attempt. It's disgusting. Some Five people, months. Some people this. have said that what you need to do is you need to do a video where like you just can't leave until you win, until you win. Oh my gosh. Oh, we can't leave. We can't. Like maybe we just keep playing Heritage until we get a score that we know we yeah. can beat it at Lynchburg College. Maybe. But, but I mean, we the closest we came went six over at Heritage and, and went eight under at Lynchburg College. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds miserable for me to have to watch you guys just play. Heritage for that. I mean, I love you guys so. I much. think maybe maybe it that's unmatched. The, how much I love you. Maybe that's Unrelated. the course conquest rules. Like if we get to a take five, which we're at take five right now. If we get to five. take five, we can't leave the course till we beat it. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, we'll just play. Like I'm down 48 for it. holes. We're not gonna lose it. We're not gonna lose it again. Well, I no, can't I, see. Yeah. Our, I can't see us losing again. Personally, I can't <laughs> either. Like I think it's gonna be like 70 degrees this week. Yeah, like we're gonna we'll show get out up, there. loose arm. <laughs> Lucy you know, goosey baby we do need to kind of do it this month because everything's coming into bloom and you don't want to be on either of those courses and when no, it's oh my gosh <laughs> good next point. month both of those courses are going to suck 
and it's I would be real bad falsetto. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hit him with falsetto in three, two. So, anyways, Patreon question of the week <laughs> comes from Heiser Club Mailbag, our weekly Q and A podcast. You can join it at patreoncom slash golf. I felt bad for all of you Heiser Club members because everyone thought you were back. Everyone thought you were there. Suckers. So half the questions were specifically directed to you. Uh, I've been we there. we just had to skip well, and be like, ah, he'll be back next week, guys. So one of these, though, they made us do a snake draft for this, which was not as fun with just two people. Yeah, snake draft with two people is just so yeah. I brought it back here so that we could <laughs> have... snail draft. <laughs> yeah, quick, fun, hypothetical. You have to draft a doubles team for an upcoming pro best shot tournament. Tournament will be two rounds. Round one at Maple Hill, round two at Idlewild. So do a fantasy draft. Youngest person picks first. Snake draft. So the last person in round one is first pick in round two. Uh, two picks in a row for them. We know how snake draft works. Who's your MPO team and who's your FPO team? This is from Kyle B. So it'll go Trevor, Connor, me. So me, I can take Connor. either an FPO or an MPO player to start? Yeah. Like we're building both teams at the same time? Okay. Yeah. Well, in that case, FPO is going to be a heck of a lot more important. So yeah, I got, Kristen Tatar with the number one pick. I got to go first on that one last yeah. time. I, was like, I, can, I can take a combination of like 50 MPO players have a fighting chance, but I'll take Kristen Tatar. Thank you very much. I'm going, I'm going to go Marweed for the putt game. Interesting. Right. Give my, me, my doubles MPO is pretty dope. So like I would just, uh, so round one, <laughs> Maple Hill round two is Ida wild. So I'm going with, uh, man, come on dog. All right, I'll go Simon the Zot, Maple Hill. Okay. He'll shred it. And then give me Evelina Solonen. Because in doubles, maybe the pressure's off her putt. Heck yeah, dog. Mm. Connor? What's up? I'm going with the Goose Man for my other. Goose Man, Marweed, sick team. That's because, a team. Because, he, because Aaron Gossage is really good. But he's not as good at putting. He's not good at all, I would you say. Know? Go ahead, Trevor. Um, I'm going to take Missy Gannon. What a goaded doubles team that is. Missy Gannon. Um, and then I'm going to take, for an MPO player... I'm going to go ahead and have um, Mr. Calvin Heimberg. Nice. Who is amazing. I'm going to take Haley King for the crushy arm. Uh, and then I will take Hannah Blomroos for the chemistry out there. Of course. And Kyle Klein for Idlewild. It's interesting, though, that like now you have two people that can't putt on a doubles team. But neither of them will have pressure on their putt. Uh, yes, they will. No. It works for well, us. One of them will. When we do Whenever the first battle, person misses. When we do a battle, we're such good putters. Oh, yes. I remember now. Yes. Yeah, that is a good putter. It's been so that's long. How we, that's how we've never lost one of these. <laughs> yeah, things. it's been so long. I, I forgot, forgot, this putt. I forgot we're insane Undefeated. at putting. Yeah. Uh, my last and final pick is to get owned. Wait, who is the second MPO guy? That you is said? owned Scott. Uh, Cal Klein. Okay, I'll take Isaac Robinson. I felt like you didn't really care about my pick, Trevor. I'm you said get owned. Yeah, but it felt like you moved on like while I was still talking. I didn't want to. I just want to. It felt like you were kind of like throwing it. Well, I couldn't take another FPO player over. Over Connor's yeah, chair it, in the back there. Yeah, I'll just like I just, I just didn't feel covering him up. I guess I guess I like I'm not mad at you. I just want you to know how I feel. I, I didn't feel valued. Mm. Get owned. <laughs> Waco. Uh, Chris Who was your last Tatar pick? I took it down. Christian Tatar took it down. Own Scoggins. Bogey Smith. Oh, okay. Own Scoggins. Connor's pick. What up? Uh, for his doubles team, <laughs> came in second. Holland Hanley came in third, and then on MPO we had Gannon Burr taking it down. Uh, <laughs> Niklas Antela coming in second as long as well as Luke Humphreys also coming in second. Let's look at FPO here first. Kristen Tatar picks up right where she left off. Nice. Let me just, if you didn't watch this tournament this weekend, or at least the FPO, Kristen Tatar, after round two, six strokes back of the lead. Okay. Was it that much? It was. I ch double checked it this morning. Kristen Tatar, Hot after round three. Which is like not even a big deal. Six strokes back after round two. Okay. But you were still thinking... Three strokes around, she'll chip away. She's yeah, just fine. Ball game. She then had a five-stroke lead after round three. <laughs> she chipped away eleven strokes one round. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, That's up, not a chip. Ended up winning by seven. That was yeah, TNT. No. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. She won by seven when it was all said and done. So thirteen-stroke turn around in two rounds. If it was a two-round tournament, she would have won by thirteen. Is how that math works. She's so good. Um, probably not actually, but anyways. Good job. Huh? Uh, if you look at her stats, she only led the field in strokes gained tee to green. Like she just. Well, you, I, you always try to look at it. One. Yeah, but like fairway hits, circle one in regulation, circle one putting, circle two. Like all of it, she was behind people in. Everything else. Like there are people FPO, who have higher birdie rates yeah. than her. Higher like. T to green FPO is like. It is a crucial one. It's really T to green. she only putted 69%. C1X? Yeah. Well, mm. C1X no more. Is C1X it still is exist? Still C1X, okay. Yeah. It is still C1X. I couldn't remember. But anyways, she just doesn't. 
there's no That's like kind of trash. There's no like this is this is why like when Owen Scoggins wins, it's like well her putter, like no one can out putt Owen. Yeah, you know what I mean? like Kristen doesn't have that stat. It really comes down to, in correlation to the rest of the field, she just doesn't make bogeys. She balanced man. Like she she gets birdies at a a good rate, but there's people who birdie more than her. It's just the people who birdie more than her bogey a lot more than her. Yeah. Like she's oh, there's yeah, there's consistent. plenty of FPO players that birdie more. She and she just doesn't implode. Yeah. It's like FBO you, players implode when they get the lead. It's well, yeah. So we'll talk about Ella Hansen in a second here. Uh, she's gonna have nightmares about this. And but, so do MPO players sometimes. But it's just like it, there are some players that whew. the what what I think I was trying to put it into words because my wife and I were watching FPO on um, the final day, and what I think makes FPO frustrating to watch sometimes is that Kristen it doesn't do anything flashy. Like it's not like her yeah, dominance it is, is weird. because mm-hmm. she is like. Oh, well, of course, it's because she throws so much farther. She puts so much better. It's like everyone who was on the lead card, I've seen them do every shot Kristen does, basically. Yeah. It's just she doesn't mess up. Like, she's just consistent. So it's consistent. not like, I don't know. It's just a no, it's, it's weird. interesting thing. You're right, because like... Like, everyone's capable people, in the field of doing what Kristen does. Describe, she just doesn't mess it up. People describe what she's doing, which I think is accurate, as like the Tiger Woods effect, where she just is beating everybody up. Yeah. Um, but the difference is when Tiger Woods was doing that, he was doing it with the wow factor shots that at the time nobody else could do. Like you would see him hit a shot that nobody else in the world could hit. And that was like how he was doing it. When you watch Kristen do it, it's just like, yeah, she's just playing good and not doing dumb things. And the rest of the field around her is just like blowing themselves up, like just doing just the, making the craziest mistakes. Um, it was very unfortunate timing, that's but, what happens. but this was the timing of when I said that to Liz. I was like, you know, I think what it is is this. And as I said that, Ella Hansen threw it into the Zuka cart, triple Mando, <laughs> just like into the side of it. And I was like, see? Dude, if I had a, I don't know, I'm man. not making, that's what, that's the other thing I if told If I Liz. had to stare at Paul Ulibarri all, all that time, I'd get a little distracted too. I told, I told Liz, I was like, point, to Trev. be fair, like I'm not making that triple Mando. Like, but I'm not a professional disc golfer. I'm glad you're being fair. Yeah. Yeah. He's uh, fair. But like, I, I think that's what hunts. you watch it. Like when I watch it, like it's not that any of like, is the, that's the frustrating part is they're all good at disc golf. Like yeah. they all have, like, again, it'd be one thing if it's like Chris and Tatar is just throwing 550 and they're playing long courses and everyone yeah. else is throwing 350. It's like, you just, she just can't compete. No one can yeah. compete. But it's like, it's people, gotta be. People it's just throw sh- farther than her. People are better forehand players than her. People are better backhand players than her. People yeah. are better putters than her. It's just no one's better than her. She's, She's just, just the most consistent. She's just good. Just well yeah. And you don't. I, that's not taking anything away from Kristen because no. everyone has the same opportunity to show up and be that consistent, and no one's doing it but her. That, that's but like you watch this weekend, I she might not lose this year. Yeah, it, it's 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 gonna be another year like last year, and it, yeah, it must be frustrating to be a competitor and like you just really can't put quite put your finger on it. And like, I don't even, I don't doubt that a lot of the FPO field works really hard in the off season. Like everybody talks about Kristen's worth work ethic and like how seriously she takes disc golf. And I think that's a huge part of her success. Obviously she's just naturally gifted too. Um, but I think that, uh, there are a lot of FPO players that work really hard in the off season and they just like, they just can't catch up. And well, I think part of it too is the, the mental side. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, well, and, and when you, when you get a chokehold on the rest of the field the way she has, everybody shows up thinking, a lot of players probably show up thinking we're playing for second. Uh, you end up on Kristen's card and you're probably just sitting there waiting for the inevitable. Even if you're not actively thinking that, it's got to be in the back of your mind. Like that, A lot of people, talking back to the Tiger Woods thing, a lot of people will say that was a huge part of his success was his intimidation factor was so heavy that as long as he could get in that leading position or near it, everybody around him would start to crumble because they were so intimidated. And I can imagine like you show up and you know, you got to beat Kristen when she wins all the time. Like that's tough to deal yeah. with, you know? And, and, it, and it's, that's why you see it stuff snowball. Cause then, you know, it all adds up and you're like, Oh my gosh, here it go. Here we go again. Yeah. I think Kristen Starr is going to win like half or more, probably more than half the events this year. Yeah. Well, what you just said is how, like, I think that's the biggest factor is like you, someone will get a lead right and Kristen's on their card or they're checking live scoring or whatever and they'll just see Kristen take one stroke yeah and, like, and then it it's like almost a fear factor kicks in where it's like you're completely fine you still have five on her you're yeah. fine but then the next thing you know boom there goes the second stroke mm-hmm. and then it just like 
they start making mistakes that are just uncharacteristic almost because it's Kristen and they know yeah. it's almost like they know Kristen's not going to make a mistake. So they yeah. feel extra pressure. There's also on the mistake. There's also a certain amount of power when you're Kristen Tatar and you've seen over and over again, the top of the field crumble and let you take a win. You can play your game sitting six strokes back going into the last uh, two rounds, knowing that, Hey, if I just play my game, there's a great chance that everybody else folds away. Like that, that's a huge advantage. Like there are some fields. I mean, you're in the and you're in the MPO field a lot of times these days. You get caught back. You're thinking, I better go out there and shoot a world number. Even if you're just if you have a six stroke it. lead, you're thinking, I still need to yeah, probably shoot course like, record. Like that's mm-hmm. the but when Kristen, she's sitting back there, she's just thinking, yeah, I'm just gonna keep playing my game, and there's a really good chance that on, coming into the last few holes of this tournament, I'm gonna have a lead or have a chance to win, and that's just what keeps happening. Now, what is exciting? A, it's exciting to watch Kristen play. In I like general, it because yeah. I love watching dominance. I think yeah. it pushes the field forward. It pushes the sport forward. It's similar, like we saw. Ken Climo had it, then Paul McBeth had it in MPO, and it got the field to as deep as it is today. I think Kristen Tatar needs her own plastic. Kristen Tatar, yeah. KT, KT Pro. Oh, a KT <laughs> Pro Pure. You know, oh, if they come, come out, if they come out with a KT Pro Pure, I know this is going to upset a lot of people. Uh-oh. If they come out with a KT Pro Pure, oh, you can't switch. I'll switch oh, from no. the banger. I'll do it. I'll do it. No, dude. I know the whole audience loves watching me play with bangers, but no, hey, dude, the banger club will not allow that. No, I would never. I would never switch from it. I can't. You know, I committed. I'm here. You love uh, it. But the watching dominance, I think it does like push the sport forward. And I know sometimes it can get boring on like like Sunday's round. At a certain point, everyone was just fighting for second. But it's still exciting. It gives every you something week going to pay in. attention to. Yeah, you and know? it gives you someone to either root really hard for, or root really hard against. But what you have here is a chance at history because she could go back to be the first player ever in disc golf probably ever in a lot yeah. of sports to go back to back grand slams i very, yeah very I, realistically. I really do think that in not just women's sports i think we see this effect in women's sports a lot but in any sport a good way to get it on people's radar is an era of dominance um if i want to use a women's sport example caitlin clark in women's basketball yeah. is a really good example right now just been phenomenal and drawn so much attention to that sport and then once the sport is on your radar then you're going to care more about parity and the competition but to get a sport on your radar or just like a division maybe if you just don't watch fpo that dominance can be good to have because it's like oh everybody's talking about this kristen Natar who wins everything let me let me see what this is all about uh and that can a lot of times bring people in and then they get a little more invested and then they either might love kristen or hate kristen or whatever and uh, I think that that just pushes the sport forward because, you know, that's that's kind of how it was um, with Paul um, and Rick. Like those guys were dominant and that that kind of brings uh, that pushes the sport forward, like you were saying. And then um, once they're there, then I think they, they tune in. Oh, more. Yeah, it's similar to I mean, we've seen it in pretty much every sport. You had the Golden State Warriors. Yeah. You had yeah. The New England Patriots. Now you have the Chiefs, Tiger Woods. It gets people uh, paying attention. Yeah, like it just it, you tune in when you see because like. Whether you loved whether you loved the Patriots or you hated the Patriots, you were watching them. Yeah, same like it's just how how it works a lot of times. So I'm all about it. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to talk about Ella Hansen. Um, she had to basically relive all of her Waco nightmares from from last year in round three. Um, was she was at 15 under through two rounds. Okay, Kristen Tatar won again. She won by seven with a score of 20 under par. Mm-hmm. So Ella Hansen went seven under, eight under, I forget exactly, but she was at 15 under through two rounds. She only had to go five under more through the next two rounds to tie for the win. Obviously, Kristen was cruising on the way home, so who knows what it would have been. But had she just went even for her last two rounds, she would have come in solo second. Uh, Instead, she fell back to a tie for six, 12 strokes back of the lead. Um, But the big storyline was she lost 11 strokes to Kristen round three. At the beast yet again. That's crazy. It wasn't the same as last year. She did struggle on the final stretch, but I think she only lost three strokes in the last three holes. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was last year when she fell apart and Kristen took it. But it was a similar storyline where Ella Hansen's in control. She's kind of in the driver's seat, especially, you know, she'd played good at both courses. Finishing at Lake Waco felt like, hey, this is leaning towards Ella Hansen's favor. Um and it crumbled. It's tough. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. Is she still yet to win a full pro tour? I do believe that is correct. I can double check I can't, that. I can't remember if she's won a silver, but. Well, she might have won a silver. Yeah. But, I don't count that, but, though. But, yeah, I'm just saying, like, when it, whenever you're a player that's trying to get over the hump, and I'll let you look that up to make sure this statement actually makes sense. 
Um, but if that is the case, because I don't remember her winning a full Pro Tour. She won a, yeah, silver, a silver. the Discmania Open. Yeah. So in any case, uh, and that was in Canada where like nobody was. No, it was in Canada. Or that was the one before Worlds or, or right after Worlds. It was, she beat Deanne Carey, Juliana Corver. Yeah. And but people I haven't heard. So in any case, whenever you're trying to win that first like full event, that full Pro Tour, and you're trying to get over that hump, it is really difficult because you... You can get a lead like that, and especially in her case, because she had had this history of last season, you know, kind of giving that up. But um, she's a really talented player. She has a lot of shots. When her putt is on, it's it's effective and it's really good. But yeah, you're trying to get over that hump. It can be very difficult. Like Anthony Barella is a classic example. He finally just got over the hump after some some huge like he had so many opportunities to win. And the hardest thing to do in disc golf is win, right? Like there, there is, it is not really a tangible skill set. We'll talk about Gannon later, but like talk about a guy who has the ability to win events. Um, you know, that, that there is a lot of players who can throw all the shots, but when it comes time to close out tournaments, that is something that only certain players can do. And you really only can learn it by, by accomplishing it. And Right now, Ella Hansen just hasn't been able to do that. And I think once she can, that'll be a huge help for her career moving forward um, like it would for anybody. But, uh, you know, it's just really hard getting that first one, especially when you're dealing with the most dominant FPO player we've ever seen at the moment. Uh, that, that doesn't make it a very friendly environment for uh, such an achievement. Yeah, no, I think... Kristen, I think on the broadcast they said for Kristen to break history and be the first ever thousand rated FPO player, she needed to average, I think it was 10 13 this weekend. I believe she averaged like 10 10 oh, or something. Hit. She went 1,000, 999, 10 31, 999. What is she so at right now? 998? She's 998 right now. She's probably going to get 999. Again. Um, but let's see. It's rigged. 1,000 mm-hmm. plus Big 999. PGA doesn't want it. But, I mean, we're in March, so there's a lot of other, other tournaments going on this month. Yeah, she averaged 1,007 this tournament. So, who knows? That's just another semi-storyline of, like, another piece of history that Kristen Tatar could break. Now, MPO, MPO's got me fired up this year. It's this kind of field up. is so freaking talented it's that insane. going into the weekend, it's near impossible to predict who's Dude, going to be where. I, have, I mean, I'm just looking at the leaderboard with, like, I mean, when Gannon and the leaders were through like five holes, I was staring at the leaderboard like, how can I even keep track of all of this? There's like eight guys at 30 under. It, yeah. it, it's insane. Like, the, it is so deep. There is so many twists and turns. You see guys every single week just launching themselves from from uh, from cards a few back. Uh, we see leaders, you know, crumbling under the pressure and then regaining ground and going back and forth. It's, it's insane. Yeah. So, I mean, first off, you had Nate Sexton. On Dude. lead card, Greg Barsby, top of chase card, yeah. Luke Humphreys what tied for lead, this? Big Germ <laughs> yeah. and Yuli tied for 10th. What the, year is this? Going into the final day. <laughs> Dude. So you had like... I don't want to take too much credit because I kind of just pulled it out did. of my butt, but I did met, name drop Sexton and Coling in the preview show as like, I don't know, maybe. And like I said, there was not a lot of fact behind that, but they both played well. They both so came on. They both showed up. So the, the vets <laughs> Dang, came to play. Dude. Now, did you take your uh, did you take your Sexton and Big Germ rock out of your bag? Is that why that that happened? is true? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, I'm gonna walk you through kind of some walk of the final round that. in case again in case you didn't watch. So early the final round, AB fires off an 11 under from like the third card, take the momentary lead. You kind of knew it wouldn't hold, but at least put pressure on a lot of people. Yeah, he had a chance to shoot like 13 or 14. Yeah, he did. Uh, as the round goes on, Nicholas was the one who got hot from chase card. He ended up also going 11 under, but he was sitting in the clubhouse at 36 under while the lead card still had a few holes to play. And that was with a, a crucial bogey on 17. 17 yeah. yeah. So hole 16 comes. Luke Humphreys cashes an absolute huge putt to, to tie Nicholas for the lead and was one clear Gannon. So he was at 36. Gannon was at 35 under. Hole 17, the lead card star framed from all over the place. It was crazy to watch that putting performance. So that gave Luke the outright lead at 37, and Gannon and Nicholas Antelo were tied at 36 going into 18. So a lot of different playoff scenarios were in play coming into 18. Um, both through good drives, we'll call them good drives result-wise, because I think Luke pulled it about 20 feet yeah. off his line, but hey, he pured it through that tree gap. Um, and then on the approach shot, I saw some people critiquing Luke for going for the green, 
how I perceived it was he was trying to lay up. I, I also perceived it that way. I don't Based think, on the whole... I don't think he was going for the Yeah, green. it looked like he was trying to lay up to like 100 feet short so he yeah. could just have it easy up and down. I think he had adrenaline going and he pumped it. Yeah. Because he landed... He didn't land on the back of the green. He landed like middle of the green and skipped kind of towards the back. So yeah. I think he was trying to leave it short of the green. That's what I thought. There's That's an, how I mean, I he was it. he was out of position. They said Gannon was 460 feet back. Yeah. Um, which means that Luke Humphries was even further. And he, threw and a he had a lead. And he threw a hyzer. There's no way yeah. that he was trying to go for it. So, unfortunately, he ends up, and it had a good shot to roll off the green, but it was one of those that just curled up and stayed OB. Yeah. Um, so, he ended up going OB, meaning Gannon, if Gannon gets up and down for par, he, Nick Loss, and Luke got up and down for bogey, it'd be a three-way tie for the win for a playoff. It all was on Gannon's shoes, like you said, 460 feet, crushes his anti flex up over the trees, um, or yeah, over the tree. It might have been a flat. It was kind of just flat. It was kind of yeah. He just crushed a shot yeah. up over the trees, and he kept was like, "I love the hot mic because you can just hear game like get over it, get over it, get over it, get." And you watch it sail <laughs> it was over. Electric it. <clears throat> crashes into the tree, skips like twenty feet deep of the hole, and he had a twenty foot fu- putt for the win. Banged it. Luke gave it a good run from like hundred and fifty feet out or so. Um, he gave a good like little nose up floaty bid. Didn't go in though. So Gannon hits it for his first win of the year. First win with Discmania. I think he actually on his putt down with. I think he puts with links now. Yeah, he's putting the link. PA three or links. He. I think on the putt down he said this is for Connor Kennedy <laughs> in his face as he threw a new Discmania disc in for the yeah, win. Yeah, that's sick. I'm glad he was putt with the link. Yeah, I'm. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm almost positive I heard it. The hot mic was a little little iffy, but I think that's what he was saying. <laughs> and his outbreak. His like last thought was like, ah, oh, screw you, Connor Kennedy, as he threw it. So I don't know. Like. The, the, the hot mic was a little iffy there, but the rest of it was sick. Yeah, that's um, I love that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Gannon, though, very impressive final round c- composure. There was a moment in the middle, I think it was round hole 12-ish, well, so where it, things got a little rocky and could have fallen apart. Yeah, it, so it starts, there was just, a, it, it, the beginning of his round was going really well, and he was in complete control, because th- though Nicholas was playing very hot, it was kind of like, he's not going to really be able to do enough, because yeah. Gannon has too many holes in hand, you know, it's not going to happen. But then it starts with him getting a time warning. Okay. That's like when you, it first it gets into his head. He gets a time warning. Then he gets a dead center spit out right as Nicholas makes birdie by hitting a spectator fence. His disc was skipping like 100 feet OB, mm-hmm. hits a spectator fence and bounces back in and then catches a birdie putt. So you get that ridiculous swing. And then Gannon uh, leaves a, an upshot wide left that doesn't get any play to go in. Like he, It seems like everything is going wrong in his round. He can't hit a line. He's getting so shaken up while Nicholas is just firing away. Um, the fact that he was able to climb back in and really – that all came down to him making an insanely clutch putt on 17 that he had to make at that yeah. point. And then 18, that upshot Wild. was crazy because when he threw his drive off the tee, I was kind of like, he's a great flex shot player. He like They were like he, 460 feet away. I was like, why didn't he go aggressive there? But then I was like, I mean, he's played the hole enough times. Like He knows he has to birdie. And when he threw that line... You know, Gannon throws far, but he's not like a crusher by any means. And when he threw it as high as he did, I was like, oh my goodness, like, is that going to get there? And sure enough, that thing lands and skips right past the basket. Like, that was a mush. That upshot was absolutely disgusting. Um, It it was super clutch. Like, I've said it so many times, like, there are certain players who will start to crumble like that. There's a hot round, like, Nicholas is just just absolutely going off. And they're just going to fall apart. The, The fact that he was able to do so late in that round, I mean... At just some point, you were like, he's got to stop the bleeding. And at hole after hole after hole, he was just like bogeys and pars and just couldn't get anything going. He was throwing good drives and messing up up shots. Like, everything was going wrong. And so late in the round, literally a hole 17, he's able to make a putt and then make birdie again on 18 to, like, end up making the win. That's something that a lot of players can't do. It's really hard to lose a lead like that when you were in command. Like, it was his tournament to win. Mm-hmm. Um and that's what's so impressive about Gannon Burton. He's so young, and he was able to do that. Uh, he's just got all the shots. Phenomenal putter. Like he's still a guy where, when he gets into that th- like forty to fifty foot range, you're like, you just know he's going to make it if he has to. Um, Nicholas played awesome golf, but man, Gannon Burr, he is just going to. Gannon is also his game is just really entertaining to watch. Too. Yeah, just the way that he throws and the no, shots yeah, he he, throws. he takes he takes unique uh, unique lines just because of the way he, he likes to throw this overstable disc. It's it's always exciting, but mm-hmm. man, yeah, he is just something special. Yeah, and so it was nine through hole thirteen was kind of that that stretch. He he went even because he had one birdie on ten on the par five, 
and then one bogey on 12 on the par four. Um, he went even through that stretch, which doesn't sound that detrimental, but if you look at everyone around him, they're, I mean, freaking AB went one, two, three, four, five, six under through those five. He had an ace. Um, a sick ace. but like everyone else was getting like four out of five through that stretch or so. So going even, he was losing a lot of strokes to the field during yeah, that stretch, guys but, were scoring. but then he came back and birdied four of the last five to close. So he came back on 14 birdie, 15 birdie, 16, very tough birdie to get realistically. I know Nick lost. AB and Luke got it, but like not a lot of the field was getting that thing. There was a lot more bogeys than it birdies. Was tight. We had. Well, so, Luke, Luke had to play it super aggressive to land where he did. A lot of people were just trying to bail. Yeah, left and he still hit a circle's edge putt outside. It was right putt. outside. It yeah, was right it was outside. Yeah, very clutch putt. It was when, sweet. Yeah. When Luke hit that putt, I thought he was going to win. I thought he won. Yeah, and then he had a, a nervy seven, hole seventeen putt. It was like fifteen feet uphill. Yeah, didn't wasn't nervy for him. Drained Dead center. It, yeah. I, I was like, that was clutch. It's over. Right after Gannon had made that putt. Yeah. Hole 17 was actually sick. Hole 18 was fine. Hole 18 was... I liked hole 18 because it was a challenging upshot, so I think it yeah. was still good. Hole 17 was really good. Like, hole 17 was a... It was really cool. Like, it looked awesome from the tee. It was intimidating. Uh, you had, like, a tough island to stick. There was a lot of... I, thought, I actually... I really enjoyed that course um, in general. I thought it was fun to watch, and I actually thought 17 and 18... Are they as good as the Beast 17, 18? Probably not. Like, that, those are just... The Beast has... Well, 18s... I think... Hear me out here. Okay. I think this whole 18 is better. It just doesn't look as nice. It just doesn't look as nice. I would, I would agree with you. I think it played out really well. Um, but yeah, the, the looks, like, it's very iconic at the Beast. Um, but yeah, I thought the course, I thought it was really, really cool the way it ended. Um, and there was just, like, you can... Just the way that tournament played out just proves how well it was designed because you could have a player like Gannon who was struggling at the same time when a player like Nicholas who was shredding, but you could tell the shots Nicholas was throwing, like, they were amazing shots. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was a challenging course. I mean, there were guys that struggled a ton out there. Well, yeah, so hole 18, because I saw some critiques on it as a finishing hole, to put it into perspective, only Adam Hammes and Gannon Burr birdied it out of the top 15. No one else birdied it. Yeah, it was hard. And James Conrad, Ezra Robinson, Mason Ford, and Luke Humphreys all bogeyed it. Yeah, so it was tough. There was a lot of parts we just had, long. but it was like... It was a long, uphill, very tricky approach shot, but it could be done as Gannon proved to win. So, like, I mean, it, it's hard to critique a hole 18 when it plays out with a two-stroke swing for someone to win. Yeah. It's like kind of hard to critique a hole that's capable it's of really, producing. Yeah, that. and yeah, you can... I, I, I understand, like, you wanting it to be more scenic. Typically, the hole 17s are the more scenic one anyways. Like, the, the point of a hole 18 a lot of times in golf is less about how scenic it is and more about... Yeah, you want to be able to accommodate spectators, for sure, but... um just having separation opportunity. Yeah. Uh, that's what's important. So I think having a par four or five for hole 18 is good. I think this one was great because you had options on both shots. You were going to have a choice on the tee, aggressive or safe, and then you're going to have a choice on the upshot. And it gave us a scenario where Gannon technically had a choice. Like he didn't have to go for it. You yeah. know, he could have laid up, but he decided up. to throw the hero yeah. shot and put it into his own hands and won with that shot. And he could have gone for that shot, landed OB and we're back in a different place. So. Yeah. Cause where he was at, had he laid up, had he laid up and then, you know, taken his par, it would have been a three-way playoff. Yeah. So it wasn't like, the layup doesn't lose him the tournament. Yeah. The layup is, I think I can win in a playoff. And, uh, like I but would, he decided to take it in his own And hand. 16, 17, 18, which would have been the playoff rotation, would have been a sick playoff. Yeah, it would have been. Challenging holes right yeah. there. Because in my head, when he threw his tee shot, I think that he, because the, the commentary team, like you had said, was kind of surprised that he I didn't was, go more aggressive. How I perceived it was he saw Luke shot and he yeah. wanted to he wanted to be in the driver's seat somewhat, so he just wanted to play chess to where Gannon was trying to put himself in a position where he could go for it if Luke was getting up and down for par, yeah. he could go for it, or he could lay up for par if he was in a spot where Luke bogey. He, he like yeah. he gave him decisions. No, it's valid. Him, if, yeah. if he went aggressive and messed up the tee shot, yeah, he doesn't have over. decisions. Yeah, no, that's valid. And obviously, he he knew he getting to the top of the hill, which was a pretty easy shot to throw. He obviously had the arm. Yeah, to he get knew he'd there. get there. I thought it was really funny him checking the broadcast to see where he landed as he's walking yeah, up. Yeah, people were upset about that. Why would you be I, upset about that? I don't know. I saw people like tweeting at us, like, "What are your thoughts on this?" And well, okay, I guess I will say it this. looks weird, but if you're not gonna like, if you're if you're not gonna ban phones, yeah, I say then technically yes, 
knowing where competitor shots are before you can see them uh, would be an advantage, except it's not because everybody can do it. They all have access to it. Exactly. If you're, if they, if they are going to ban phones, which at this point they can't do because they don't, you don't have a leaderboard like everywhere on the course. Like if you go to a PGA tour event, there is literally a leaderboard by every green, Yeah, a giant, a giant digital leaderboards. They know what's going on. Um, But if you're not going to have that, then the players really need to have their phones. Um, in, in which case, you can't be like, why? You can't go on the Pro Tour Network app. Like, how are you going to police that? Well, so. also, the in disc golf, so many times, like, it's not that uncommon for a player to run up to check something and run back. True. So, like, what's stopping them from, like, running up and seeing where someone's... I mean, on the tee shot, that'd be weird. But yeah. I, I didn't really see anyone do it. Gannon was just checking where his... Like how how close he, his punt yeah, was so, for the and, win. He, and he also the shot was already done. Yeah, so he also really wasn't doing it for any kind of advantage. You can tell he was just antsy and wanted to see how. Yeah, far he just wanted to know how far yeah. of a putt am I wasn't going to gonna make. change his strategy at yeah, all. Yeah, like he had already thrown the shot. Yeah, it wasn't. like... We'd probably be talking about it more if somebody was doing it and got an advantage from it. We'd probably be like, hmm, that might it be. It would be it would be a lot interesting if if Luke had thrown his shot and Gannon was watching where his shot landed to decide how aggressive he right. was taking his next right. shot. Like yeah. that's a completely different scenario, but like. Especially but once again, everybody can do okay, it at this point. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, also yeah. in disc golf, you've played this course enough that like, I feel like if you watch Luke, if Gannon watched Luke throw any shot, you kind of have a rough idea where a shot's going to be anyways. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it, it's very rare that DGN, if someone pulled up DGN on their phone, it is going to make or break their decision to <laughs> be aggressive or lay It was really funny because when he was doing that, the broadcast like turned, they mixed the hot mics in um, and Terry and Nate were still trying to like talk about it. They're like, no, Gannon, like I think it's like 30 feet, but it was like quiet because they had mixed in the hot mic. So like you could just barely hear them muffled in the background. And it was, funny. That was very funny. It's like they were in, in the same, they were there just like whispering to Gannon from a, from a distance. <laughs> yeah, it's it was very weird. Uh, no, it was a very impressive performance from Luke at Waco yet again. Uh, with the addition of Lake Waco coming in, I just didn't really think he was going to have yeah, a chance. That was I mean, impressive. To be fair, it wouldn't have been crazy to say you didn't think Luke was going to have a chance regardless because, yeah. like, he he showed up here last year, two years ago. I think he came in second. Um, and But this year, Lake Waco, it just it didn't – watching coverage of it, like watching practice rounds, it just didn't – Luke Humphreys didn't cross my mind as a guy that, like, this course is good for. Yeah, uh, We knew he, he was good at the beast. He's proven that before. But, I mean, he went toe-to-toe with Gannon all the way down. He, he held his own out there. I think he ended up shooting, was it a 9-under, 10-under final round? 9-under uh, final round. So, like, very impressive final round. The hot round, I think, was 11 out there. So, he, he held his own. Um, you do have to feel like that is probably one of the best shots at a win Luke Humphreys will get in his career. Yeah. I mean, it's been Waco now a couple of times. Luke kind of just hangs around on tour. Usually not a guy you see contending for wins. Um, anytime you see a player, like you could tell how much it meant to him. Yeah. Um, and how like how bummed out he was when his caddy, dude, his caddy's face. He looked like a ghost when he when they threw that OB flag up. I wonder if his caddy gave him some kind of read on that, like the like disc selection wise or something. Like if he knew the course because. Man, he looked like he saw a ghost when his, his head just dropped whenever that OB yeah. flag went out. Like they were so bummed, and it's always you see this story very often in golf. It happens a lot in uh, in traditional golf as well, where you have the kind of journeyman uh, pro who hasn't won, seeking that big moment in their career, versus a fan favorite, really talented guy who wins all the time. And it's like this these two. So you had the audience kind of split between we just love Gannon Burr. We want to see Gannon Burr win and like everybody rooting for kind of the story. Uh, and it's awesome. It's really fun to watch. It's always either way, you know, there's uh, people that I'll be happy about it. Uh, if Luke wins, like, wow, that's cool. It's awesome that Luke was able to get a win. Um, and if Gannon wins, there's so many people that love watching Gannon Burr play and win. So it's uh, it's always great to have that kind of matchup going down the stretch. Oh, yeah. Now, the other player that was obviously in this, Nicholas Antela. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm gonna call it. I think he gets his first. This isn't a hot take by. Bro, does Nicholas Antle around? Kind of. He kind of does. It's, I, it's how it he like, looks he like brings it, yeah. his arm around like that, but his 
form when he throws does it. Yeah. It's yeah. like it, it's a mind trick on you. I think it, it, it tricks me because every time I see him release it straight, I'm like, it looks, this guy's insane. It feels like when playing on him, difficult it mode. feels like he has both his elbows stuck out. He kind of you know, does. Yeah. It kind of has that like He's feeling got very yeah, But when form. he like comes back, then from there in, I think. Yeah, he, he which is technically all that matters. I think yeah. typically people tell yeah. you you want to do a motion that's repeatable because it kind of helps oh, your body yeah. feel that. But I mean, it, the, technically not wrong. Golf is all about, it's all about position. I mean, what nothing position is you wrong in disc golf. It's all no, about, yeah, no one knows what's right. Yeah. In well, it's, all about, it's all about ending up in the right position. Like yeah. They'll tell you with your golf swing too. It's like, it doesn't really matter how you get there as long as you get to this position before swinging. And that's kind of like with disc golf. Yeah, too. like what's his name? Chuck Berry. I'm just kidding. What? What? <laughs> just making the joke about that one guy that has the weird swing, and I was just saying a random name. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that didn't make any sense. Chuck Berry? <laughs> Who are you even trying to say? Are you talking about um, Charles Barkley? Yes. There you go. <laughs> that was the, the the joke was I just said another random name <laughs> that sounded Charles similar. Barkley's not even a professional golfer. I know. He does have a weird swing. He does though. have a weird swing. I, I thought if I said the guy with the weird swing, you guys would just catch on. That was a stretch. That was a stretch. But I did catch on eventually. So <laughs> That is, man, Connor. We might, I think we should have a, we should have like a Connor timeout where if he makes a joke, <laughs> <laughs> like we have to like get him to explain that there's like it's a, like it happens every once happen. in a while. Yeah, it, it, my brain is no rarely is somebody else's brain where my brain is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, I don't think it's a hot take to say he's gonna get his first pro tour win this year. That's my yeah. that's my I, he. Man. I'm not gonna go as far as with Cole Dolan where I predicted the the month it was gonna happen in. But yeah. uh, I'm willing to take a bet if anyone wants to bet against it. I'm no, I, he's super. He's, Connor, Chick Fil A on it. Nicholas, man, I'm when good, he's on, he you. is as good as anybody. Yeah. He just hasn't quite been as consistent as you'd like to see. But I would love to see Nicholas Antela like a, more establish himself as a consistent like top ten guy who's always challenging because he's very fun to watch. He's super yeah. good and has a really awesome technical game. Now, A B, obviously, the final round propelled him up the leaderboard a little bit, but. Yet another very impressive performance. He finished in a tie for fourth with Mason Ford, who also had a great weekend out there. Are are we label? Are we ready to label AB as the guy to beat this year yet, or do we need to see this a few more weeks? Oh no, not the guy to beat. But I think he's going to be around this year. I think that's easy to say at this point. I I kind like whether he won or not. I expected him to be around the top of the leaderboard all year, just because kind of was last year for a good portion of the season. He yeah. he made a lot of a, a cameos towards the top of the leaderboard. Um. I think he's going to be very dangerous this year. Uh, you know, I don't know if he's going to be, you know, other than Calvin Heimberg, nobody just goes week to week. Like, that's just not a thing that happens. And that, you know, that hasn't even happened for him um, so far this year. But I do expect that he is going to be a guy that we see consistently contending for wins this year. I think he'll get at least one more. Um, I think he probably gets one more. I'll say that. All right. I like that. Uh yeah, I think I, I think this week kind of just proved that like he's he's gonna hang around. No, yeah, he's very good. Now Calvin Heimberg, big storyline broke DNF. He DNF'd. Well, he's never played. Well, so yeah, he he, he dropped, DNS did not start. Yeah, he <laughs> dropped from the tournament beforehand. Uh, he said, unfortunately, I'll not be playing my first DG the first DGPT Plus event at Waco this weekend. I've decided to sit this weekend out due to a lingering elbow injury. Connor, oh, what up? Did he throw more than five forehands? <laughs> I don't know. Dude, I'll tell you right um, now, if Calvin Heimberg goes down with an elbow injury, I might stop watching disc golf, man. All these injuries, it's 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 disgusting. Yeah, I don't... I'm The words lingering and elbow in front of injury is basically like <laughs> the scariest thing you can hear in any kind of arm-related sport. Like, yeah. it basically, it's like... This is the end. It's basically death, murder, kill. It's not good. <laughs> We've seen this lingering coming Ooh. up with. I mean, we have Paul still kind of questionable performance wise with his shoulder. It's injury. a hospital out we there. We have <laughs> Eagle McMahon recovering from surgery from an elbow. We had Simon Lazat with an injury. Now we have Calvin Heim, like, and obviously Ricky with lines. But a lot of the like use injuries, right, where it's coming from either overuse or something weird happening with the form. A, how are we not seeing more of this in the past? Is it just because courses are getting longer? Yeah, I think, yes. And then mm. B, totally. Like, is. it's a, I'm hoping this is a wake up call. I'm not saying that these guys aren't doing this, but I'm hoping it's a wake up call for the rest of the field of like, as much disc golf as I'm going to play in the off season, I need to be spending an equal amount of time with a like personal trainer, physical therapist, like mm -hmm. something. They got to start treating, treating themselves Chris and Tatar, like I forgot, also had the elbow injury yeah. and surgery. Well, here's the thing about the injuries. It, you know, we've talked a lot about players 
in this technology era where like we might get more data on throwing, like how that's going to change the way they play. One thing that a lot of players are going to start having to consider is how can they throw to preserve their body? Like rather than how can I throw to gain more distance? How can they're going to start thinking about what am I doing? And I, we've seen Simon kind of do that in the past. Um, but like, what am I going to do with my game and my throwing motion to protect my body? Cause that's something in baseball. It's a very big trend Mm -hmm. with pitchers is like changing the way that they throw. Um, sometimes you'll see pitchers completely change to like a submarine style just because they had elbow issues in the past. Um, I think that is going to become a trend because like there are just some guys who have form that is probably just harder on their elbow. The elbow is that key joint that just gets crushed. And you said it, the courses are longer. They play every single day. And every time they get to one of these tour stops, they're faced with just long throw after long throw after long throw. It's different than it used to be. It's not like they're showing up these par three courses and chipping 300 foot hyzers anymore. They're just laying out bomb drives everywhere. Uh, I think you're going to see players play less practice rounds potentially ease off of that and yeah i mean it's demanding to me i think a key that we haven't seen in disc golf yet that we see in a lot of other sports is the way you practice in the off season because yeah. right now your off season practice is field work go out to a court like it all involves a lot of throwing mm-hmm. yeah whereas like if you're a pitcher your off season isn't I don't know much about baseball, but I'd be shocked if your off season consisted of trying to throw as fast of a fastball all off season as you could, sure because not. like, because like the, your arm just has a clock on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's a reason they have like they there's what's the they have a pitch count, don't they? Mm-hmm. Where like they they don't let them above a certain amount to preserve their arm. Well, explain he, that to me. Well, yeah, every <laughs> I understand. Explain it to Connor. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand. They, like a, the coaches will will track the amount of pitches. Is that like per thrown. game? They, there's not like a limit necessarily but, like the coach will kind of limit but they're yeah they they keep that in mind and then there's sometimes um if a pitcher is you know if you're getting towards the end of the season and you're not going to make the playoffs and your pitcher is just a little fatigued they'll shut guys down for yeah. the year as well but yeah off season for like baseball pitchers they'll throw bullpens they'll have like sessions where they go out and throw but yeah a big part of it is recovery um I mean, yeah, and if you think, if you look at like uh, Little League Baseball for the young guys, they actually have real limits. If you throw a certain amount of pitches, you can't pitch the next, like for a couple of days. Like, yeah. I think I even just in like youth baseball growing up, we had things like that. Um, but yeah, it, no, you're right there. Because like in disc golf, you'll literally hear pros say, I got to throw as far as I can because I went to the field yeah. and threw as hard as I could day after day after yeah. day after day. It's like, it's true. that's not good on the your more, body. The mm-hmm. more people get injured, the more it's going to become a trend. I mean, hey, if you're somebody like Seth Muncy, it's good for business, I guess. Yeah, it's great for business if you're <laughs> Seth Muncy. Yeah, because like the off season, if I'm a pro, I need to figure out how can I improve my disc golf game, improve my body's ability to throw consistently and improve my body's endurance out there without playing disc golf in the off season. Like how can I, how can I keep my putting skills sharp, keep my like timing and stuff sharp in the gym? Yeah. How can I do that off the course where it's a, you know, very, I'm not getting injured with these like movements, very like I'm strengthening everything through it so that when the tour comes, Mm -hmm. I have like a month of ramp back up to throwing and then I'm ready to rock and roll for the tour. It's totally like the intentionality of it. Like I think it's just the difference between, and there's probably already pros that do this. I'm not saying there isn't. No, absolutely. It's totally the, the idea of just like, I'm not going to, I'm going to have these many days this week where I only do short game stuff. Then two days out of the week, I'm going to throw full power shots and play. Like I think a lot of guys, and this is the, I'll, I'll tell anybody that, that one of the quickest ways to get good at disc golf is to just go out and play, Yeah, you know, play tough courses, throw a lot of shots. But I think a lot of guys, that's kind of their routine. And certainly throughout the season, that's the routine because they just show up to the next course. They're playing another practice round. And practice um, rounds is the way to learn the course. They throw five or six tee shots. Exactly. Yeah. That is so yeah. demanding on your arm. And yeah, I think you're going to probably have to see more guys and, and girls be more intentional with like, okay, I'm only going to throw full power on these days. Like I'm going to, try to save what I've got in the tank a little more because yeah, we kind of have always thought disc golfers were invincible, but these last few years have shown us that they are not. And yeah. a lot of our big players are getting hurt, which well, kind of tells you that the ones that practice having, the most are getting hurt. They're, yeah. They're having to push themselves harder and harder and harder because the field is getting harder and harder. It's and harder. true. So they're, yeah. just, they're having to throw crazier shots. Yeah. They're having to throw further. Yeah. yeah. No, it's definitely You've a got, storyline to pay attention to just because and it just stinks like imagine if Gannon Burr next yeah. tournament picks up an injury and he's out for like yeah. three months like that just is a bummer yeah mm-hmm. and now to be clear we're not saying that the players who are injured 
aren't already doing a lot of this stuff yeah, in the yeah, offseason yeah. because like NBA players Injuries get still injured happen. <laughs> all the time. Like every professional sport yeah. that like takes things that have this stuff down to a science, you're still going to get injured. Like, more so, do yeah, happen. More so saying if you're one of the guys that's still healthy, you're probably just thinking to yourself like, oh my gosh, like am I next? Like yeah. you guys start thinking about that. It's just like it, the 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 landscape of disc golf's changing a lot to where like now a lot of these pros do have enough money to think about having a personal trainer in the off season. Mm-hmm. Whereas like before it was like, do I have a personal trainer or do I get to fully grocery shop this off season? Like those are like, yeah. you know, that's in, not the choice anymore for a lot of guys. You get an insurance plan on your body parts. And you can also insure thing. your arm. You know, the, there's this whole story in golf. Uh, this guy, Anthony Kim, he actually recently just made his comeback on the live tour. But he had an insurance policy on his body because he was an up and coming like he was like the next Tiger Woods guy and he got hurt. And to, in order to get the money, which was like, I want to say people were speculating it was like upwards of a hundred million dollars, like a ton Jeez. of money because he was his career was worth a lot. Yeah. He had to not play in order to make that like maybe longer than he would have sat out and that kind of like set back his whole career. Wow. But he cashed this huge insurance. Check. I kind of yeah. worth it. Who's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little I bit, mean, he made, oh, he made I, it I back. sit on the couch to get a hundred million. Oh, yeah, man. oh, oh I just, I, but I loved it. I love golf so much. though. <laughs> what <laughs> am I going to do? It is a little tougher in golf because like, that money's out there. True. That yeah. It's true. a little different than like disc yeah. golf. It's like, oh, I'm not going to win 12 grand this weekend. The insurance policy <laughs> was based off of what he could have yeah. made in yeah, that time. That yeah. is a good point. But it was guaranteed this But time. it is yeah. guaranteed. <laughs> you just have Angie, Angie don't have to practice. It sounds like a pretty dope contract. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Listen, man. Boop, boop, boop. Where yeah. do I sign? That's good stuff. I wonder what my arm's worth. call that the couch potato contract. What your arm's worth? Yeah. <laughs> that should be well, that should be a punishment to have to go to an insurance agent and try to get our arm insured. Well, at the end of the day, <laughs> as a YouTuber. at the end of the day, you have a pretty low risk of arm injury, and you are going to pay the insurance company. Yeah. So like, they might quote you something pretty good, but you're going to have to pay them every month for it. <laughs> I know. It'd just be funny to like you could. I could to argue sit down with an oh, insurance agent, and I don't know if anybody would sell me this policy, but I could totally argue that like a very heavy portion of my yearly salary at this company is depended on my right arm yeah, being able we, to function. It is yeah. all dependent on your performance like, on the course. Like <laughs> I've got, well, I'm just saying, like, if, if I you suck, we will not make content. If Hunter I cut can't. my pay a lot last week. Like, if I, <laughs> if After I, I saw my, what happened in Course Conquest, I was like, Connor, man. <laughs> if I broke my right <laughs> arm, like, it would suck. Would I'm so glad I'm not a professional disc golfer. <laughs> That'd be so Imagine sick. having to be good at disc golf to make money, man. Oh, it sucks. Well, the thing, is, the thing is that I actually went to an insurance agent. And oh. I was like, I'd like to insure my right arm. He's like, we can't do that because we saw the Mythbusters video. And we know if your right arm goes, you're better with your left. It's true. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> they were actually gonna pay Connor not to insure his arm. That'd be a yeah, should I, should I today try to throw a couple lefty shots just to you know? I'm. What if I That's ace nice lefty? Though. That'd be sick. That would, that would be, be sick. sick. That would be sick. Uh, the final storyline. Lefty. <laughs> for, final storyline I want to cover from Waco here is some notably bad performances. We'll call oh, it. let's call oh, it. Uh, wow, first Hunter. off, Matteo. Negative. Last oh, cash. On, last cash, Matteo. Buddy cash, 45th. though. 45th. A buddy cash, though. How much was the, how many caches? $400. That's nice. Bad. No, yeah. I, I mean, I've had, it. I've had worse weekends on Discord. What did, uh, <laughs> what did Mason Ford cash by getting that solo fourth? Cause he made like a big. He tied for fourth. Tie for fourth. He didn't get the solo fourth? No, did he AB, bogey 18? I don't know what happened. AB he, tied. He must have bogeyed 18. Uh, 2,900 bucks. That's good. You got uh, me good there, Hunter. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> I've been mean, worse on a good disc golf course. Missing the cut. Missing the cut. We have Isaac Robinson. I yeah. believe one. either you or I had him in our top three. Or no, did maybe Joe picked him to win. I think Joe picked him to win. Come on, Joe. No. I don't know. 47th place for not Isaac in Robinson. My, not in my top three because I had Simon Shocking. and A.B. Uh, Brody Smith missed the cut. But he had fun. Brody's passion's back. Also, I yep. have well, he heard... played hecka good. I have, heard, most I fun have heard from a confirmed source. There was a lot of people out there that were questioning, would Brody do it? He did call Cupcake on a time violation. Yes. I have heard, I have no heard that. So yeah. there was a lot of speculation that Brody wouldn't have the stones to do it. Apparently, you, he did. I'm yeah. going to tell you And apparently, it went over okay. Well, here's something I will tell you uh, is if you say to Brody, I bet you won't do this, as long as it's within the realm of... N- like anything a person would do, he probably will do it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, Brody's not afraid to do anything. No. <laughs> Especially when it relates to just a mildly uncomfortable social social situation. Oh, no. He's, not even a chance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's going to do it. Uh, Kevin Jones missed the, cat, missed the cut. Tristan Tanner That's missed the cut. Story. Silas Schultz missed the cut. <laughs> Paul McBeth missed the cut. Silas Colton Schultz kind of started out pretty well. Yeah. What Colton, the heck? Colton Montgomery, Gavin Babcock. Not C. Monty. Yeah. 
Simon Lazat, yeah. the Crame Dog. Oh. My Dark Horse pick, Drew Gibson. Dang it. Oh, yeah. Nico LaCastro. Dude, this cut eight people up. I'm yeah, telling dude. you right now. Anthony that- Bedanza, Eric Oakley. I, I, Bedanza held his own, though. I, will I, say well, I mean, yeah, he was out there. He played. I think he averaged like in the, in the 980s or yeah. 990. He, hmm. beat these, he beat Jared Stoll, who Bomb City Stoll got the Eagle on 17. I just more so I'm reading the list behind below him. Who else he beat? Uh, GT Hancock, Carter Aaron's, Max Reading, Aiden Carter Scott, Aaron. Michael Micah Groff. Aiden Scott is Austin Hannum third on the Scott Smith list. Scott Smith have, list. But he, <laughs> did you see? A he's on Prodigy's core team. B he wore pit vipers for the photo shoot. Oh come on! Does that, that bump him up? Wait, 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 wait. Were, were they gooders? It's Evan Smith. I don't know. Evan mm. Scott. Aiden Scott. Yeah, I think. Micah Groth, also up and comer, Austin Hannum, Eric Oakley, Trevin Crow. Are we going to call Those Carter really Aaron's a bust? Not yet. Okay, we'll give him one more week. Sure. <laughs> I think that's funny. Let's just put him on notice. Oh, Evan Scott, eighty third. No reason was he the worst, the second best? No, Evan Smith did better. He came in like fortieth. Evan Smith's the best, Evan. Yes, and he's the best. Forty seventh. He came in. Is Brody Let's Smith see. on your? Smith How did Scott Aiden list? Scott make your yeah. Evan list? Okay. Huh? Because it's <laughs> because it's Evan Smith, Evan, Evan Scott. Scott Aiden, Aiden Scott. Scott. So it's the Evan Scott list. It's a list of Evans. All basically the same. I think we just, yeah. it's, it's Evans, Evans and Scott's. <laughs> it's very Chuck Berry, Charles Barkley. It's kind of like when they do Blake of the Year. And That's they, what I was going to say. It's just Evans. Brooks. Yeah. yeah, it's just Evans. Yeah. Um, all right. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, to wrap up the show before we get into Trevor's trivia. Well, to wrap up the Waco show. I was about to uh, say, I'm wrapping up the show this week. You fun. are. That's you are, fun. Actually. Yeah, well, not fun. technically. Silas selection. We have the Manufacturer Cup update. Let's go. Do you uh, have a website? No, 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 no. He emailed it to me. First off, he corrected everything that he had the sponsorships incorrect. Um, I haven't seen Edwin. this. Edwin. very cool. He had the sponsorships incorrect previously on a few players. So thank you all for letting us know in the comments. So he corrected that. But Come on, Disc Mania had uh, the most players in the top 10 this week with four. Four players coming to the top 10. They also had the highest weekly score coming in at 46 and a half, driven by the entire quote unquote Sky team being in the top 10 for both events 2024. Yeah, dude, because Kyle Klein was going off too. Yeah. And of a, a scored their first points of the season, getting them on the board with. Funny enough, Bars being sexed and leading the charge. That, that Joel Freeman crazy. also got in there. <laughs> That's a retirement home. Uh, MVP, DGA, and Lone Star still have zero points right now at this point in the season. But Discmania takes the lead this week. Now they have 69.5 points on the season. Discraft's in second at 60 points. Prodigy's in third at 26.5. That's your top three. Discmania was led by Gannon Burr earning 25 points in first. Nicholas Antilla getting 16 and a half with his tie for second. Then you had Kyle Klein scoring four points. And I forget who came in 10th. There was There's five people tied for 10th, but someone for Discmania earning one point there. Um, so who Discmania, else? team to beat right now at Come nearly on. nearing 70 events through 70 points through two events. Discraft and Discmania. Oh, it's Casey a, White. Casey White is the top. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Discmania and Discraft on, have a chokehold on. Now, this is MPO only. They have a chokehold on the rest of the field right now. About a 35 point drop off to Prodigy coming in next. So As we'll see how the rest will. of well, the. Well, Prodigy can, they can climb back in there. MVP, you get Simon and Eagle going to the right event. They could. They're they could gonna need. Up, they're gonna need like a, them to get a bunch of wins. They're already seventy yeah. points behind right now. It's gonna take quite a bit to to well, climb I mean, back Discraft in. Discraft is like the preseason favorite. For, they were so yeah. for Discmania to be upset. have a nine and a half stroke, nine and a half point lead on them through two events is is definitely impressive. But upset. All right, time for the fan favorite segment, Trevor's trivia. What up, dogs? With the Trev, Trev. Okay, I got something kind of fun. I think this time a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Connor, time out. <laughs> <laughs> no, Trevor so, laughed. There wasn't silence following. I basically have Maybe here, that'll be your timeout. If you say a bad joke, we just go quiet for five seconds. That's the worst. That's actually I, the worst. I have a <laughs> list here of the top 50 best-selling discs since wow, this is fun March time. of 2023. And this is from, I'm just going to say, a very large retailer. That's all I'm going to say. You so pulled just, it off our site. No, <laughs> <laughs> not off, not off of our site. That's why I didn't name drop. Um, <laughs> uh, but I'm just saying, just know that this is a pretty good data sample because it's from a very large retailer. Okay, um, this is from March of last year. From March of last year on to up to now. So year. So yeah, basically the last a year. A year of data. Okay. Um, and so the way this game works is you each get five guesses five. to just guess. Any anyone on the list, and it, you just get one point if it's on the list. You get no points if it's on. You're gonna go back and forth, okay, and see who can win. This is the top fifty. This is the fifty best selling, and you just get a point if it's on the list. That's right. Oh, okay. Um, and we go back and forth for how many guesses? Sorry, five each. I was trying to come up with my math of what guesses I want to do. Okay, five each. Okay, 
And I think some of this list is predictable. Some of it is not at all. Yeah. Connor, you want to go first or um, second? Yeah, I'll go first. I want to... Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. I'll go... Now, what is most popular? Does that mean the most sold? Yeah. That makes Best what selling. I'm about to say. I'm, okay, I'm going to go with a zone. A zone is on the list. Okay. Buzz. A buzz is also on the list. This is sketchy because I know not everybody got a ton of them. I'll go Hex. Hex is on the list. <laughs> Destroyer. Destroyer is also on the list, too, too. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go... go. I'm going to change it. We're going to go 10 guesses each. Oh, I think gosh. five could be too easy. 10 is We're a lot. We're going to go 10 each. 10 is a lot. Okay, I will go with so five a... Too easy. 10 will be hard. Mm. Two to two so far. May I ask a question that could be pertinent to both of us? Yeah. Does it separate out if a player does like a signature run or anything? No. And so they're all just... Yeah, that's all these molds say. are stock. Okay. Every single mold on here is... Mm, if a disc is... Yeah, I'll say this because there's multiple. Um, if a disc is stock, but technically a part of a player line, then that still counts. Yeah, okay. but they're but they're stock. They're not like a that's, special yeah. run of a disc. But that's what I'm, I'm asking about special runs. No special runs on here. There's no special okay. runs. I'm gonna go with a Luna. A Luna is on the list. Three to two. Um, I'm, my brain's falling apart now, though. I'm lose. I forgot what frisbees are. <laughs> AVR. AVR is on the list. Three Dang. to three. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll go with a Firebird. Firebird is on the list. Four <laughs> to three. Gosh. Um, Woo! I'll go Zeus. I'm, fall- I'm so scared. Zeus is not on what? the list. Okay. All right. The, Dang on. the ice I, has I been broken. Lost. The ice has been broken. See, I don't know. We got 10 guesses each. How many? How many guess? How many? Well, have, you guys have done four guesses. Oh each. my gosh! It is I four can't to think three of that right many now. more days. The pressure is uncanny. I lost this early. Um, <laughs> that's just disgusting. You didn't Misconduct. lose yet because I'm. You don't understand. The all list the gets kind of tricky. All the rest of mine are gonna be stupid. It, we um, haven't even named a lot of the what, which should be like one through eight. We've only named like two of the top ten, probably. I don't know. Some of these surprise me. I'm gonna go with. I really want to get a trilogy. Something. That we're gonna get. I'm scared too. I'm really scared too. You got like probably two out of thirty molds to get I there. I know, I know. Um, I guess I'll go with a. And this is through when is when was this, what you're pulling through this is up to recent, like uh, it's real time updated. Okay. Passion, passion is not on the list. Okay. Yeah, passion. I don't think they made enough of last year. Okay. Unfortunately, I wasn't sure. Uh, Semi popular. Envy is on the list. Four to oh, four. Oh, that's a good one, Hunter. Three Through five guesses, it is four to four. <sighs> Guess number six. You hear he said buzz. I'll go with a... Toro? Toro is not on the list. Yeah, I didn't think so. Decent Rock. guess. Rock is not on. Yeah, the list. I was scared. I didn't want to be hurt by that one. That's why I didn't. Well, I say just it. normally destroyer is like the second on these lists. So through, through very surprising that it's not on this list. Yeah, through six is guesses, still four to four. Um, four guesses each. That was my fifth. Okay, guess. I'm just sort of thinking. I'm like, counting. What's in a lot of people's bags? What's in a lot of people's bags? I'm just four to three, and then you tied up at four to four, and then you just guessed again. Oh, uh, I'm just going to go with, I'm just going to throw Raider out there. Raider is not on the list. Yeah, I figured. At this point, I just what are my guesses? say plastic. Okay, well, last year the Royal line came out, but I don't know if anyone had enough of it because I, they just, they just came too. out with it once and then like it. I don't think the Raptor's been guessed. I'm going to go Raptor. Raptor is not on the list. Daggum. On to guess number seven. Can I go with a? Still Would that include a captain's raptor? Uh, well, they're different molds. So I'm going to say captain's raptor. Not on the list. I felt like maybe just like the the push of them. I don't know. No, that was a good guess. The tough the part is MVP would cover this list I, I knew. if their inventory, but it, it depends on who it was. Because if what depend on the manufacturer or depend on the retailer, a lot some retailers did have enough MVP for this to cover the list. But like, well, even then, though. Because, like, we hit the Hex, but, like, everyone had Hexes, the Envy, because, like, the Lizottles were all last year. So, yeah. if the Lizottles are in the, in the Envy, I chose because the Rebirth. Yeah. But, like, was the Pixel hot enough? 
to get onto this list. If the no, Raptors didn't make not. the list, then surely they sold surely more pixels not. than Raptors. Surely they sold more pixels than Rocks, and that's on the list. <laughs> what did they sell more? Than? Oh, the Wraith. The Wraith is on the list. Yeah. Nice. Okay, on to guess eight. Five to four, Hunter. Uh, I'm going I'm going to go <laughs> with, I mean, just a starter. I'm going to go Leopard. Leopard is on the list. Okay. Five Val- to five. I want the Valkyrie. The Valkyrie is also on the list. Yeah. What? I think six, I know which retailer Six this to is. five, and we are on to guess nine. Two more guesses each. Six uh, to five hundred. Then I will go with the... Let's keep in that realm, but what else? What else is there for me, though? I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna go with a nuke. Nuke is not on Dang the it. list, so Hunter can win if he gets one right here. Give me the venom. The venom is not on the oh! list. Oh, it came All out right. last year. It was really popular with us. Connor, I thought it might have been. Got, our last you got a guess. chance. This is your last guess. You got a chance um, here. Tie it up. <laughs> Nail biter. <laughs> Goodness. Okay, I'm gonna go. Vulture. Vulture is not on the Dang. list. Yeah. And then I'll go um I'm very surprised. That, yeah, I can't wait to hear the ones that we name get. a certain disc. <laughs> it's like it was the top seller, I'm pretty sure. Oh, last year? Yeah. Zone OS? No. What was that on the list? I have one more guess. That's not on the list. The Zone OS wasn't on the it's list? The one. It came out last year, didn't it? The so it's one, definitely an end of the one that I'm very surprised. Retailer. It is pretty end of a heady, but no, none of you said the glitch. I think that was the top. Oh, seller. okay. Um, Again, MVP you just don't you don't know how much inventory someone has. Well, I said it was a very large retailer, which I think you probably could insinuate who I was talking about. Mm-hmm. Um, but glitch was on here. Sunk Proxy was <laughs> on here. But there were weird ones, uh, like the river was on this list. The, I thought about saying Rolo. that. But I didn't think it was popular anymore. Oh, uh, I bet this list is the wizard this list was is on probably there. dummy rigged. The wizard because I is bet on like there? the freaking uh, what's their molds? I took all their molds out. But then you don't have fifty. Well, yeah, there was a couple of there was a few of their molds. Yeah, but they because they're dummy high. Some of them are. Yeah. yeah some of them are. I Rigged. thought I thought about that saying the, the wizard rock out that bumped the raptor yeah. out. No, there, there's still a ton. There's still a lot of interesting ones on there, like Mako three. I yeah. thought about saying Mako three too. But End Pixel a, Pixel was on there. Time I was lapse scared was on of there. I was scared of the Pixel. I wasn't Dang. too scared of the time lapse, but I was scared of the Pixel. Mako three, but no rock. Crazy. Yeah, Mako three sell a lot. They're good. Discs. You got to remember it the beginner sense. market. The discs. beginner market yeah. is so powerful. No, you're right. You're right. It's a fascinating. That's why I went with leopard. Yeah, but our list would look a lot different. I think. Oh yeah. Way oh different. yeah. That was that was the problem. Was I was thinking about that. Yeah. Well, beginner. It depends on what you describe as a beginner list, because like true beginners right now, they're into the, getting like really into the sport, or all they're not going to Innova. It's mm-hmm. also true. True. Well, the diamond was very high on this list as well. Yeah, diamond. Yeah. But I'm saying like you. you Pure would be was hitting, on this list. Was the soul on wow. the list? Was not. PA three was on the list. Wow. PA three kind of surprised me. Yeah. PA three doesn't surprise me. It's just I mean, it's, I guess, it should be on. I think the list. like Let's every every prodigy player is is putting the those. PA three yeah. should be on everyone's list. Mm-hmm. Oh. Let's be clear about that. I'm clear. Clariton doesn't mean it doesn't not prior. a sponsor. Uh, all right, let's get the style of selection going. I already have my choice. May I go? Yeah. Yeah. Mine is a clash frisbees, ginger. Nice. Good Thank guess. you. I am going to go with a. <laughs> Ballista Pro. I want the Psychic from Elevation. Wow. I don't know. I think it could be something. I'm scared. Every time. It was a Robbie C. pig. Oh, my gosh. Of course it was. Oink, oink, dude. Is Is that a pig or an owl? That's a good point. Good point. That's a good point. Good point. Too bad none of us guessed owl. (laughs) (laughs) Why does anyone make an owl? Is that a disc? We should make an owl. Who? Who makes (laughs) the owl? I can find (laughs) owl. PJ approved. Uh, who makes who? the owl? It's probably it's probably one of those companies that has all the animal themed discs. Isn't there? Who, 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 who. Isn't there a company that has like all animal themed ones? Let's see. Owl. Does it exist? Does it? Innova. Oh no! You've got the great horned owl from Daredevil discs, oh. and then there's the howler and the growler and the prowler, but no owl. No. I'm owl. gonna make. I'm gonna make a company. You can called call me dog. Owl. I'm gonna make a company called Dog Discs, and you're gonna have like dirty dog poodle. discs. Like they're all like. Just like dog the mutt. Names. This is the the bur, Burna Doodle. Nice. They're all actually they're all doodles. <laughs> they're all doodles. <laughs> doodle disc golf. <laughs> all right. Well, by the time you guys uh, are doodle listening to this doodle. episode, yeah, I'll probably well, still be a so tired. You just you just <laughs> aced whole three within the last few hours. Connor, I did. Of people listening to this. Okay. How do you feel right now? Uh, I just feel great. I feel a little cold. 
Well, how how is how chilly. is acing hole three? Because we haven't done the challenge yet, obviously. How is acing hole three going to make you feel? Acing hole three is going to make me. I don't see. Here's the thing. Uh oh. I I'm gonna <laughs> celebrate a lot, but like uh -oh. also at the same time, it's not hard. So I can't tell how it's gonna make. You've me tried feel for ten hours. Can you it's say not it's hard. not hard? It's hard for you. Yeah. It's not that. You can't that makes you feel something. worse. <laughs> if, if you've tried something for over ten hours and you haven't done it, you can't say it's not hard. Have you ever heard it's of the not hard, the rule though. of hundred hours? Says that if you do something for a hundred hours in a year, you're better than ninety five percent of the world at. So that you'll thing. be an expert so if you, at not aging. If you three. get to hundred hours, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. You'll be better. I know exactly how not to do it. <laughs> no, with a hundred zones, you're finally gonna be throwing the hyzer line to the straight. I feel it, good about it. it. No, the yeah, fact dude, that, that I have that thirty mile hour wind's gonna come off there and yeah, take it all the way to the other side the of the park. Dude, but the fact that I can throw, throw shots the same disc over and over, <laughs> over and over again instead of having to throw yeah. a zone yeah. and then a whammo fairway driver and then it's gonna all, be like much yeah. easier. Yeah. I'm not even. Easier. I think. I think ten minutes. I'm coming up with oh. contingency <laughs> plans of like how do we make this stream still worth watching? Yeah, it's probably gonna be boring. Connor's gonna get it in the first like twenty tries. Well, I'm gonna throw one set all lefty. No, my, I'm just kidding. My plan is, but I'll throw a couple. You're probably going to ace it within the first hour. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. And so then Trevor and I will have to ace it too. Oh, that's what that's what I'm thinking. Is Dang. if you ace it where the stream hasn't been going on for long enough, we'll just all three have to ace it. Like if, if we've Fair only enough. been live for like 20 minutes mm. and you ace it. Yeah, we can't just end the I'd stream. I'd say the last an hour. That's fair, but if and, it's like, if, if it's, it's over an hour, yeah, we're, go if we're golden. If it's like oh, we're only half hour in. That's what I'm saying. If it like just started, we might be here until eight o'clock tonight. Never know. No, I got you. Plan I got plans to work on my truck after work, so like I gotta be done at three. You know, <laughs> so I did title the thing. Connor will ace whole three. Yeah, I know. I will ace it. You, I'm just gonna ace it before it. three o'clock. Yeah. No. Absolutely. <laughs> In my head, we're back here before. Like we might still be able to film this afternoon. Yeah. That's where wow. my head's at. Dang. Yeah. I think for you're gonna sure, get it easy, dude. So, oh, well, hey, hopefully you tuned in. Uh, and if if we're still live right now, you know we're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if you still see a little live button next to foundation, go give Connor some encouragement. <laughs> Thank you. Tune in, Connor's like passed out. <laughs> <laughs> I might be.